we all see dreams and witness omens in our life omens we witness almost every day and dreams we often see do they have any bearing on future regarding dreams if you go to the ancient classics you will find that almost every almost before birth of every great personality the mother have seen some type of dream or the other which have indicated them regarding what is going to come in future not only that in our day to day life also dreams tell us a lot about our future in fact i believe dreams and omens are the god's way to guide us i think there is a very popular book by paulo colo names the alchemist named the alchemist this book talks about how nature talks with us only if we can understand in fact every religion every civilization in this world have talked about the this particular thing the nature talking to us and they have formally believed into it that is the particular reason that ancient civilizations such as babylon and others have been very prosperous very progressing and at the same point of time they have prospered well only because they have understood the signal of the nature in our human life also these dreams and omens are the god's way to show us what is in the future so that we can prepare and do things accordingly for our benefit we just have to understand it first coming to dreams i believe that dreams are of four categories now which category your dream belongs to this can be easily decided based on the prashna chat anything that is happening in our day to day life which is in the control of humans or which is not predestined should be seen from prashna horoscope tells you about the prarabdh karma and what is happening because of that but the result of kriya man karma and all these things are indicated by prashna horoscope only so for any dream that one have seen one should ask a prashna chart for the moment so preferably if you have seen a dream you will have question regarding the dream in the morning so you can make a prashna yourself or you can consult an astrologer and in that prashna out of the first fourth seventh and tenth house you have to see which house is most powerful for an example if you take this question in this current horoscope you see the inner chart is the rashi chart the ascendant is expected by jupiter the 10th house is having ketu expected by no planet the 4th house is having rahu mercury and the 7th house is having no planet right now out of all of these four houses ascendant is powerful because it is expected by jupiter who is the rashi lord of the ascendant also to find which rashi is powerful you have to see the aspect of jupiter mercury and sign lord over the house any one of them influencing the house makes the house powerful aspect is more powerful as compared to placement if a house is getting more than one sources of strength then you should declare the house with maximum sources of strength as a winner if there are equal strengths then you have to decide as per the strength of the rashi lord this is the basic setup you go with now dreams are of four types one is what freud will say as sigmund freud will say as the fantasies of mind right oedipus complex and all of these things right so some dreams are a mere fabrication of mind 
regarding some wishes and desires that we may have had in past, but could not complete. For a particular example, if someone loved someone, if a person loved someone but could not get them, now they can often get a dream in which they are losing something. Now this is just some reminiscent from the past, some dream from the past. Your mind is dramatizing. Now this is more or less related to a desire, right? You wanted to have something that you could not have. And because the memory is very strong, it is there in the subconscious mind. You get a dream related to it. This type of dream is indicated if the Prashna have the seventh house as the most powerful house. If 10th house is the most powerful house, then generally a past event that have happened that is dramatized by the mind. Now this past event, the interpretation can be altogether different. You know, there is something known as past life regression where the practitioner hypnotizes the person and wants in order to know about the past of the person. This is not considered scientific. Scientists have this particular opinion that in this hypnosis, person generally tries to rebuild their childhood, which people don't, rem don't remember very vividly. And recollecting a few memories from their childhood and few things based on their preconceived notion about some person, say people like Hitler or some war or something, they create some ideas which... They identify as past life, but it is related to real life only. It is a mixture of some actual event that have happened. Influences over the mind. Current state of the mind. The popular notions in the childhood of the native. And based on that, some setup is made. For example, if someone have nearly escaped an accident, Right. And sometimes what happened that we may not have escaped an accident altogether, but maybe your mind is fearful of an accident. Though nothing close encounter with accident have happened, but your mind is fearful because of some reason. And in this trip, some small mishappening happening happens, which cannot be counted as an accident altogether, but mind may interpret it as something bad that have happened and because of it you can get dreams related to you say some handicap and right you can get some dreams related to handicap for example you know someone is tying you in the dream and you are not able to move and all of these things right so this is coming like the mind is interpreting it as that you know one day you were going somewhere with a lot of fear and suspicion of accident in your mind or doing something with a lot of fear and suspicion in your mind Though nothing as such happened, but mind will mind may interpret this faint memory because mind only remember major things, right? Minor things mind may not remember. Active mind, but subconscious mind will remember it. So subconscious mind can fabricate it into you know something which is crippling or bounding and can show you dreams related to it. This also have no bearing on future, and it is indicated if the tenth house in Prashna is powerful. These two type of dreams that I have explained have no bearings on future at all. Then which dreams have bearing on future? Now, sometimes what happens, there is a situation that is going to come in future. Now, human assessment about themselves is, mi is mixed with a lot of fantasies and estimations. We will be able to do it. We will pull it off. This is all what your active mind is thinking. The subconscious mind, knowing your nature, behavior, character strongly, may believe that you will not be able to pull it out. Sometimes when person is underconfident but try to you know, show confident and try to suppress their feelings, this can happen between the active mind and subconscious mind where subconscious mind knows the reality but the active mind is so much programmed by the native that he does not think this way, right? So if anything is going to happen in future, 
though your active mind is very optimistic about it, but the subconscious mind knows what is actually going to happen based on what you are and how you are going to react in a particular situation. And from this tussle between the active mind and subconscious mind, you may get a dream, which tells you things related to what is going to happen in future. And in this particular scenario, because your subconscious mind knows you better, subconscious mind knows your experience and subconscious mind knows in reality whether you will be able to pull it off or not, anything it can be. It should be taken as a future indication and importance should be given to such dreams and if it is related to anything, whatever it is indicating that have to be seriously considered, right? This is the case when the ascendant is powerful in the Prashna chat. Another thing is that sometimes the God or the nature may want to warn you about something that is going to come in future that you call intuition, forewarning, forewarning, whatever. Right. The situation is not in front of you. You don't know about it, but because of nature or because of the blessings of Godhead, you are warned about it beforehand through some dream, which is quite cryptic to decode. Right. This dream this type of dream is indicated when the fourth house in Prashna is powerful. So first of all, we have to understand that all dreams don't have significations. Only these two dreams indicated by the Lagna being powerful and the fourth house being powerful are the dreams which are going to have some bearing on future. Right? Now, because the first or the fourth house is powerful, which is indicating what is going to happen in future, based on the influences on the first house and fourth house, you have to decide whether the result is going to be good or bad. If the house is influenced by benefic planets, it does indicate good events are going to happen. When the house is influenced by malefic planets, it is going to indicate bad results are going to happen. Now, based on the house lordship and natural significations of the good and bad planet, you have to decide what good result or what bad result is going to happen. That's one point. Another point is that you have to divide and this is what I have found to be working well. You have to divide the daytime and the nighttime in seven equal parts. Right. And the Lordship should be given to the seven planets from sun up to Saturn as per the weekday. So you say today is Friday. It is nighttime. So the order will be Night time divided into seven parts. First part will be ruled by Venus. Next part will be ruled by Saturn. Next part will be ruled by Sun. Next by Moon. Next by Mars. Next by Mercury. Last by Jupiter. Now, if you remember when you have seen the Prashna based on the time, or if you don't remember when you have seen the Prashna or when the Prashna is casted by astrologer, then as per the planet who rules the moment of the Prashna as per the natural significations of the planet and as per the position and placement of the planet in the Prashna horoscope, the result of the dream should be judged. Right? For example, take this horoscope. This is a Prashna that I have casted Daughter of a client is seeing dreams related to her death. What bearing it may have. Now, if you check the Prashna chat, Lagna is Leo. It is not influenced by any planet as such. Fourth house is Scorpio that is having Ketu and Gulik not in, expected by Mars. Seventh house is uh, Aquarius, not influenced by any planet. And tenth house is having Taurus. That is having Rahu expected by Jupiter. So now what is happening? If a Rashi is influenced by Jupiter, Mercury or the sign lord, that Rashi should be considered powerful. Now 10th house is influenced by Jupiter and 4th house is influenced by sign lord Mars. So both of them are equally powerful. Now in this particular scenario, you have to see the strength of their lords. Now 10th house lord is Venus. That is in the 6th house. In Capricorn, just a friendly Rashi, whereas 4th house Lord is Mars in his own house in ninth house. So 4th house is powerful. And this dream, because 4th house is powerful, should be taken as a dream which is indicated by God. 
right regarding some future event this dream is coming from the god side nature side whatever you take and it is indicating some future event what future event it should be indicating so mars is influencing the fourth house and ketu is already there now because mars is the ninth lord and fourth house lord itself it is indicate because fourth house is having much malefic influence right bulik is there ketu is there mars is influencing all the malefic influences fourth house indicating happiness so some loss of happiness should happen fourth house also indicates home so separation from home going away from home for something will happen and because fourth house indicate happiness and comfort sacrifice of happiness and comforts will happen but for whatever reason one will go away from home and they will do sacrifice of their comforts and happiness that thing may not be fulfilled because it is having full malefic influences only and because mars is in the ninth house it have to be related to education higher education which comes from the ninth house knowledge which comes from the ninth house which also came true right these things came true the person went to some other place for completion of their education however there were obstacles in that uh, in completion of education the technique that i was trying to illustrate you if you just go to misleni and you see prash if you see panchang here the sunrise uh, the sunset is happening at 1759 and the next day sunrise is happening at 710 so 1759 is uh, almost uh, 559 right and next day sunrise is happening at 7 so 5 to 5 will be 12 hours it will be 13 hours and some minutes so it is a total of from 559 to 659 it will be 13 hours and then it will be 13 hours 11 minutes 13 hour 11 minutes makes a total of 791 minutes which when divided into seven parts 113 minute will be one part which is almost 2 hours uh, sorry 1 hour and 1 hour and 53 minute is the time now sunset is happening at 759 so 1 hour will be sorry sunset is happening at 559 so 1 hour will be 553 so 1 hour will be roughly so 1 hour will be 559 to 659 and add 53 minutes to it so it will be 752 the prashna as you can see is asked at 826 so 752 first part will complete and from 752 the second part will start and as prashna is asked at 826 the prashna is asked in the second part of the night now the day being thursday the first ruler of the first part will be jupiter and after jupiter comes venus and sun moon mars mercury jupiter venus saturn this order we have to follow so we have to see the position of venus to see more about prashna and if we check the position of venus we see venus is in the 6th house it is indicating struggles person will have to do a lot of struggles venus is the 10th lord so there will be obstructions to success and venus is the third lord there will be lot of ups and downs mental instability and tension right this is the result of prashna now using the analysis of the same prashna doing further analysis on it the result is specifically related to which area the result is indicated in how much time the result will be in front of the native what remedies uh, can be done what remedies should be done this all can be find out from the prashna using further techniques right but 
this is the basic point that I wanted to make in video that first of all, you can get four type of dreams out of which only two types indicate future. So first of all, you have to make a Prashna chart to find what type of dream it is. And if you find that the dream is the dream is a result giving dream, then you have to analyze the Prashna chart to further see what result that dream is indicating. The result will be related to which area and how much time the result will fructify and what remedies can be done related dream can also be foretold using the Prashna. Now talking of Prashna and the other part of it, the omens. Omens we witness in day-to-day -day life and uh, if you read about astrology and the story of astrologers, first of all, in the analysis of Prashna and in the analysis of horoscope also, omens have a very important indication. Such important indication that in Kerala Prashna, Ashtamangal Prashna, the astrologer will be invited to do a Prashna at a particular place. Astrologer will give a date and time that at that point of time, I will visit that particular place and we will do the Prashna. Now on that day when the astrologer is supposed to go to the venue since morning till he reaches the venue, whatever happens around him, he will observe and will give predictions based on that. And this is the base and the most important thing related to Ashtamangal. And this reveals very, very magical results. Not only this, even when we are doing the Prashna related to anything or answering any question, for example, you say there is a question related to childbirth. And you hear a child crying or a child passing by or you just happen to witness some child. Suppose someone messages you on WhatsApp or somewhere who are having a child, a photo of a child in their profile picture in the modern world or anything like that. It does indicate that childbirth will happen. Despite the fact horoscope is indicating childbirth or not, Prashna is indicating childbirth or not. This indication is given by God. First thing is that whatever is the result of omens that will supersede over any analysis that is found from Prashna or the natal chart, that is the first point. Why? Because this is a direct message being given by God and nature, God or nature, whatever you say, that's the first thing. Secondarily, horoscope is prarabdha karma that is decided right at the time of birth. You have a lot of sanchit karma and out of that sanchit karma, some karmas are selected by God, which you are going to face in this particular life that is selected at the moment of birth itself, that karma you will face. But after you have born, you have done many other karmas in this life. Also the result of which you will either get in the same life or in next life. This is Kriya Man Karma. Now, because horoscope is indicating Prarabdha Karma only, if you only analyze the horoscope, you cannot do complete justice. You have to See Kriyaman karma also. For example, someone is having a very bad planet, but the person have done the remedy. Now the person is 30 years old. He have came to you for consultation. How you will know that he have done the remedy? You will have to make a Prashna, right? Prashna indicates the Prarabdha karma. Prashna indicates the Kriyaman karma. Right? So in Prashna, if you see that the planet is improved, but it is bad in the natal chart, you should know that the person have done remedy for the planet and good results for the planet should be told. This way you will know. Omens are the same thing that because of some Kriyaman karma, because of some remedy or helping someone, right? The result of the Prarabd karma may change. That is indicated by Prashna chart and the backbone of Prashna chart analysis, a very important factor in Prashna chart analysis is omens also. Omens that are happening around astrologer when he is doing the Prashna is very, very important. Not only that, even if you are not doing the Prashna, but if you are just to read a horoscope, you are going to do a consultation. Now, after finishing the previous consultation and before the start of the next consultation in between this time, or if you don't do consultations daily, then you know that you are going to do consultation today, say in the afternoon. And so from morning till afternoon, if any event that is happening with the astrologer, is very important that should be taken as an omen and the analysis of the horoscope should be done accordingly. It is so important. It is so important that as I told you before also that omens will generally supersede the analysis. 
there are numerous stories of astrologers in you know 80s and 90s who you know who were predicting about a horoscope some omen happened they ignored it the predictions went wrong right and astrologers who were predicting some horoscope some omen happened they observed the omen made result told result based on that and it came true right it is not only story in my practice also i have seen that more or less if more or less omens have bearing on the horoscope if before the consultation you are having a fight with someone or you are displeased in life or you get displeased because of something it indicates that the native is displeased in life or the native is going to be displeased in life right whether or not the horoscope indicates it that's not the case because horoscope is prarabdh karma only kriyaman karma is indicated by prashna particularly omens right this is the language of god this is the sign of god signal of god that every astrologer have to understand see in prashna i am always saying that the time when the astrologer sits to analyze the prashna that time should be taken when the native is asking the question that time is no importance for me because astrologer is a samvatsarik right when astrologer is sitting to analyze the prashna that time is very important and time and over right many prashnas i have seen i have when the answer of the prashna is known i have analyzed comparatively prashna from both the viewpoints the time when the native asked it and the time when i made the prashna and i have always found that the time when i have made the prashna gives correct answer be it any type of prashna or any type of right any type of prashna any type of query right so the time when the astrologer sits to make the horoscope is important right but why because astrologer is samvatsarik right the native is not asking the question to the astrologer the native is asking the question to the god astrologer is the medium god or the nature is going to give the answer astrologer is not giving the answer astrologer cannot interpret a prashna positively and make the result positive or astrologer cannot interpret the prashna negatively and the result will be negative omens particularly helps the astrologer to see the result which is not very visible sometimes what can happen that though you know the principle it may not come to your mind or your analysis can be erroneous because of any factor multiple factors can be there it can be erroneous because of any factors and if an astrologer is spiritual clear hearted right good in his work then god will want to guide the astrologer towards a good prediction and uh, that guidance he will do through omens only the astrologer who know how to read omens and how to interpret omens can be told an astrologer in real sense because only if the astrologer can read the result of omens only then he is able to understand the communication or the language of uh, gods and nature right only then he can be told a real astrologer otherwise not right because if the astrologer cannot read the indications of nature or godhead what type of astrologer he is because you know that the answer does not depend on the astrologer it's not like i want to interpret some horoscope in a good way i will uh, you know give more emphasis to good things only and i will predict good things and that will happen certainly that will not happen right what is indicated only that will happen right that is what the god have written as the future of the native this is what the nature is indicating for the native and that i can read correctly only when i can understand the language of the nature language of the nature i can only understand when i know how to interpret omens any astrologer who is not interpreting omens is not trying to understand the language of the god he is not trying to understand the language of the god the greater understanding of astrology will not happen the greater synchronicity with the divine will not happen in the astrologer's life and his progress will be stagnant after a particular level right time over time this is observed any successful astrologer who is good at prediction not the ones who are only good at theories and talking right any good astrologer who is very successful at predictions you read about them you talk to them they knowingly or unknowingly interpret a lot of omens that is very certain that is very clear 100% sure not only that even in day to day life you as a human also see god wants to guide you now for that if god's want to guide you you will go visit a good astrologer they will give you predictions 
they will give you advices and you will implement on that. Many a times, it is not feasible to go to the astrologer very quickly, the availability of astrologer and many other things are there. So when God wants to help you, because when you worship God, when you are spiritual, of course, God will help you, but he will not come in front of you and will tell you to do something, right? He will give you hints and you will have to understand that particular hint. And many a times these hints are given by the omens and the things that are happening around you. For example, you are going for a travel and some inauspicious thing is happening. Right. Then it is indicating that you should not go to the travel. I have seen over time that before going anywhere, if there is a discord between, right, you know, like if there is an unpleasant experience or some discord or some difference of opinion between myself and anyone else, or if I have witnessed someone fighting very bitterly around myself, generally, whether the uh, travel is Successful or not, that is another point. But the experience is not very good. The success is not 100%. Things are not seamless. You know, the complete maja, what you call the complete enjoyment is lost. Right? So if anything is happening, if you are seeing a number repetitive, rep repetitively, or if something is happening around you, which takes your attention, then through that event, because you are witnessing it, it is happening around you, you are present at that moment. It is not a mere coincidence. See, humans cannot even move a speck of grass without the, the blessings of Godhead, without the permission of Godhead. So if anything is happening around you, if you are present at a place at a particular point of time, it is happening because of a reason. And if you know how to interpret correctly for 80% of the things, you will not need an astrologer at all. Right? Because... If you are a spiritual, if you are in communion with God, if God wants to help you, if you get the grace of God, he will try to communicate messages to you also. And you will have to know how to understand that particular message. And for common people, it is astrologer. For astrologer, it is very essential to understand what the Godhead is trying to say. And the Godhead says that through omens only. So careful observation of omens, both for the astrologer and for the native is very important if they want to use 100% of the gods and nature's guidance, right? So this is very important and keeping this in mind only, I have decided to do a four class course on omens and dreams. Four class means it will be more than eight hours. Not only that, dreams and omens are many. And I cannot explain everything in the class, right? So major dreams and omens that we see in our day-to-day -day life that we are, uh, you know, like that is possible to be seen in day-to-day -day life that I will explain in class. More of my focus will be on the uh, Prashna-based principles and horoscope-based principles that I have explained to you earlier right, regarding dreams. Teaching such principles will be my prime focus in the class. Apart from that, I will also explain those uh, dreams and omens that you can witness in your day-to-day -day modern life, the major ones. That I will try to, that, that I will explain how to interpret the dreams and omens and how to make result of new dreams and omens that your client may come to you with. That I will be teaching in class. But apart from that, I will also be giving you an exclusive PDF and whatever PDF is given in the course, I make it myself. I type it myself all from my memory only. Right. That is shared with students. Right. That is shown to students. They can take note of it. Right. Note taking is the process. How you will be a student without note taking. Right. So an exclusive PDF of some 150, 200 pages will also be shared, which will be containing the meanings of almost every dream and omen that I can think of. So it should cover almost everything. And the most important point is that I have, uh, I have included a lot of new age omens also. For example, WhatsApp message I told you, right? Like, Nowadays, people generally send a WhatsApp message or some social activity happens. That should also be taken as like if someone is messaging you every day, that person have messaged you today also, that's nothing new. But if some surprise, if you know, some surprise message have came to you or if some surprise social media notifications come to you or if something very unusual happens, then it also have some bearing, right? So this, because I have been using it in my experience, this is also, this will be also explained in the class. And I believe that this is a very precious course. 
not only for practicing astrologers. For astrologers, it is good. For those who want to become astrologers, it is good because first of all, their predictive skills will go a level up. Secondarily, they will be able to, you know, be Jyotishis in the true sense because they will know how to understand the language of God and nature. And slowly, slowly by observing these things, you know, something changes in the heart of the astrologer. Some connection happens. It changes the outlook of the astrologer, changes the predictions of the astrologer and everything. So for astrologers, it is very beneficial for normal people also. It is very important because then you will be able to interpret dreams and omens around you all by yourself. And as you learn to do that for maximum small life things, whether I should do it or not, whether I should go here or not, to decide these things, you will not want the need, uh, you will not want the help of an astrologer because see, regarding how many things one can consult. For every small thing, whether I should go on a travel today or not, whether I should do this or not, one cannot consult an astrologer, right? So small, small things, you should know the answer yourself. Right, because the need of astrology is in everything. Whether you should eat right now or not, whether you should travel or not, in everything, astrology is needed. Right, sometimes if uh, out of vat, pit and cuff, you say the pit element is not activated and you eat food at that point of time, what it will do, it will create problems. Right, food will not be digested properly and if you continue eating at a time when the pitta element is not strong, it can give you stomach related problems, digestion related problems it will give you. Right. So, if you know Muhurta, you can know that at what point of... This is not related to Muhurta asset. This is a bodily cycle which will be different for every person. If you know your bodily cycle, you can eat accordingly but knowing the bodily cycle and calculating the bodily cycle is a long task. Generally, you can eat at any point of time. There are few omens around you. If you see them, you just avoid eating for some 15, 20, 30 minutes. Till the murta changes, one murta will change in 48 minutes approximately. Right. So around 48 minutes, you can delay your food. And after 48 minutes, you eat. And I tell you that you observe it. That you observe it for one year. And you see that problems which are coming from food, digestion related issues, blood related issues and all of these things which directly come from food. You see that after observation of these things in one year, how your health improves. Right. So for common people also, it is very important because you will understand the nature of God and uh, nature and you will be able to take better decisions and in the long run, you will be able to make your life good. So the webinar is from 18th of March to 21st of March, the four days. Join it, get the knowledge and use it for the benefit of yourself, your clients and your near and dear. Thank you.